the last lame effort of the United States to save its soul came when John F. Kennedy made a speech about doing something that was good to do because it was hard, the space program, the moon landing program. We have now, see, at that point, you had a division in the economy. To the extent that the space program, as Kennedy had actually revived it from mere death, it was about to die. But he revived it by that speech. And despite the other things that intervened during the period up to the time that this crazy Nixon came in, but we actually, in the space program, had the most important accomplishments in economy, in our existence, occurred within this sector of the economy during that period. We reached the ironical point, however, with 1967-68, with the change in the budget under those conditions, in which we were sending things into space as to the moon, but we were using up the technology which had brought us there. That is, we had lost many of the technologies which had been developed in the, under the space program earlier. This was the same thing that hit the uh, one, Route 128 circuit in Massachusetts about that time or all these satellite industries around MIT and so forth were involved in various branches of the space program. And they began to collapse. But they, their product went into space, leaving the thing that had produced this product behind. And you will find there's still today bits of technology kicking around in some private laboratory here or there where it left in a dustbin from that period, and it's still around. Now, is, don't talk about economy the way most people talk about economists. And people who are decent economists really don't believe much in what's called economics today. They think actually in terms of more, much more concrete terms. And they don't use terms like industrial economy in any different sense than the diff distinction that Alexander Hamilton made with manufacturers back in that time. Uh, infrastructure agriculture, manufacturers, that's, those are still the basic categories. Everything else is subsidiary. Now, the key thing that drives is science, physical science in particular. And physical science has many manifestations. It has the, the process of discovery, the process leading to a process of a discovery, and the spillovers of a process as the effects of the discovery come trickling down through the process of engineering and so forth down, down the line. So now you're always looking for revolutions, scientific revolutions in technology. And sometimes these are little, like the, the thing by electric alternating current improvement, and sometimes there are much more fundamental things. But always in every case, when mankind adopts a mission which says, look, we've been doing this for a long time. Isn't there a better way of doing it? And you put a science driver behind this thing. Can anybody come up with a better way? Look, look at this thing. We've been doing the same thing for 10 years now. Isn't it about time we came up with something new, something fresh? And if you have a project, which is a national mission orientation, in all the great movements in, in history, economic history, come essentially from these revolutions, agro-industrial revolutions revolutions in technology, mobilizations of people around technology. And it also goes to the question of how far can you go with a given technology? There are limits to any technology. These are the scientific principle limits of technology. Now we have before us a great change. The space program was part of it. We got to the moon, and after Nixon, we could never get to the moon again. He killed the moon. He gave us moonshine instead of moon. <laughs> and we killed the space program. The space program is a shattered piece of crap today, in which the, you have elements of scattered in various parts of industry. Some guys have got a laboratory here, some of these guys got something there. So this is the kind of thing we're dealing with now from the basement now. We have before us the prospect of 
industrialization of the moon, which was devised in, actually in the 1970s, in 19, early 1980s by a friend of mine, a friend of ours at the time. And that's still valid. Now, if you want to go further into space, you want to go to higher levels of technology on Earth, you have to go into space. Because you have to have the challenge of going into space to get you to drive your technology upward and bring the benefits of driving it upward back to Earth and back to the benefits of mankind. We have also the question of exhaustion of various types of resources. Not, they're not really the resources that are exhausted, it's the, the way in which they're concentrated. The richest resources are being drawn down. We have to use poorer quality of resources, but we get the same effect. We do that by technological progress. Now the project before us is, and everybody who knows anything about science or economy knows this, we have to have a project of completing the moon assignment, as, which was what the push was then with Kennedy. It was not just going to the moon. The, the purpose was to industrialize the moon. And these would be largely automatic industries, which require automatic technologies. It would be industries controlled from Earth with very few people because, you know, a low gravitational, electromagnetic gravitational field is not the best thing for your health. And, right? and then we, the object is, what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to go to Mars. And what the way, how do you go to Mars? Well, if you want to send something to Mars by inertial trajectory, you can do that. But I'd hate to send a human being out on an inertial trajectory for 200 to 300 days on a journey between the moon and Mars. It's not exactly, you know, what's going to arrive there, Mr. Blob? So, so therefore, we, we have to think about accelerated flight. Well, we have on the moon a resource we recognize, helium-3. The sun has been depositing helium-3 as a, as a mineral on the planet surface of the moon for a long time. There's big pits of ore of helium-3. Helium-3 happens to be a very useful item for space flight because it, it, it can be directly, it had very directly applied to the propulsion process. We could technically, with helium-3 fusion, we could have a one gravity flight from the orbit of the moon to the orbit of Mars, which will get you between the two planets within a few days. Now there's some problems to be considered in venturing that, but if we can get to the planet from moon to Mars in several days by 1G gravitation or something comparable to that, that place is open to us, buddy. And whatever resources it has and whatever it means in the stepping stone to further things in space are now available to us. And once we adopt that policy, everything we've done in getting to Mars or getting toward getting to Mars now spills back on the planet as a revolution in everything we do on Earth. And the problems and challenges we face solve that. What this country needs, apart from reorganizing this economy in a sensible direction, we need to have, and there are a lot of people about interested in this. We've got 10 nations now which are committed to a moon development project. 10 nations so far, committed actively. And I'm committed to a, a Mars arrival project. I've been committed to this for a long time, as some people know, since I did this half hour on mission, on mission to Mars back in 19, <laughs> 1988, 88 campaign. And it's still valid today. I don't think I'm going to get there. I think I'm not in the best physical condition for that kind of tra travel this time. I wouldn't, it's not my sightseeing venture of the year, you know. But anyway, in, in probably in 20, 30, 40 years, we could have achieved not only the fulfillment of the moon development, but will have achieved in some way or the other, we will deal with Mars, we will conquer Mars. We will see what's up there, we'll see what use we make of it. And we will change the, nation of, the nature of man's conception of himself. Man will no longer think of himself as an earthbound 
land grubber. Not land lumber, but land grubber. And man will think of himself as man in the solar system. Because man is, now this means a change in relationships of human beings to human beings. You've got a human being on Mars is working up there, a human being on Earth, you, it's a weekend travel to get up there and back and so forth. Uh, it's going to change the relationship of, uh, in human life. All the technologies which are now used to do this will now be reflected in revolutions in technology back on Earth, including growing food, food stuff. I mean, growing vegetables on Mars. I mean, this is a real change in agriculture. It's a, it broadens your conception of what agriculture means. And the way, that's how you do it. You have to adopt a national mission. Because I've got people who are now in their 20s, believe it or not. We still have produced babies. We still have people in their 20s. So we have a supply of them. Now they have, if we can get Obama under control, they have a life expectancy that goes into their 70s and 80s. And what are they going to do in the meantime? They're going to be the recipients and transmitters of this, this technological progress and what goes beyond before it, beyond it. And so we have to think about two or three generations ahead. I mean, don't you think about your grandchildren? Don't you think about even your great-grandchildren, if you're lucky? Hmm? Isn't that your mission in life? Isn't that your sense of continuity in life? So what, what's that? A generation, a generation of 25 years. Three generations, 75 years. Four generations, 100 years. What are you going to be doing in the next 100 years, people? If you're thinking about the future, if you care about your children and grandchildren that are coming after you, if you think about future humanity and locate your identity in what you're doing for them to make their lives possible, what do you think about? You think about where we're going to be 75, 100 years from now. And think how, well we, how accurately we can forecast where we might be. What are our options? Where are we going? What, should we, what we should be doing? Hey. What are you going to do when you reach your retirement age at uh, age 75 or something, or 70 or 85 with improved health care? What are you going to be doing with yourself? What's your future? What kind of a world are you choosing? What kind, of a, what kind of a solar system are you choosing to live in? And that's the way you do it. You don't do it by coming up with a list of this, a list of that. What are your priorities? You go out with a mission, a mission for humanity. This is not about jobs. This is not about income. This is about humanity. The difference between man and a beast. What are you as a human being going to do that certifies you're a human being? You're not shameful in the result in the eyes of your grandchildren. What are you going to accomplish with your life? We made, we accomplished something. We got so far. How far are you going to take us? How far further are you going to take the human race? And that's what makes it work. It's motivation how you choose to spend your life. Not pass it, but spend it, expend it. To what purpose? To what end? What are you going to raise children for? To what end? For humanity. Why should you be remembered by people two generations from now? Why should you be respected a generation from now? What are you going to do to earn that respect, your identity as a human being. And if you follow that line of thinking and use the space issue, the space exploration, as a parameter, a paradigm, from our recent experience, which shows the difference, then you say, we don't talk about industrial policy as such. We don't talk about agricultural policy. We talk about human policy. We talk about the development and progress of the human species to a better life for future generations. And that takes scientific and technological progress, as well as the cultural progress which fosters creativity in the individual human mind. And that's our mission. What we're getting is people got with these crazy categories of values, crazy, stupid, dull, but you, they bore me. Now let's talk about going to the moon. That doesn't bore me. Because that, that involves exactly what we have to do step by step in terms of science and technology to do each thing we have to do to get each step along the way. 
And that's our mission orientation. We take that mission orientation and you find it works just fine.